Uh, let's talk about Leatherface. Leatherface is a very interesting character. Right now in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he's in a certain position that people want to nerf him, others want to buff him, depending how they see the character. It becomes more of a personal bias. They want to keep it that way, change it, make it better, make it worse, whatever it may be, because of the way they've experienced versing this or playing this. So I want to talk about this and give my insight about it, because I feel like Leatherface is a very unique character, as he's the only character that starts in the basement from all the family against four victims. And there's this weird power play that happens, because being a 1v4 experience in the basement, Leatherface can make things happen, get some kills, make some potential plays happen if he's really good at it, or he ends up falling to the demise of the victims being bullied continuously. And trust me, being bullied continuously isn't fun. Do not close that door on me. There we go, now he's dead. Oh, I didn't get the hit. I didn't get the hit. So the combo for the one shot is overhead. He's going to be safe. I'm not going to bother with him. Oh, wait. Overhead into a light and then hit right up there. But I stalled it. I stalled it. So I was too high revved. Oh, it's so lucky. He would have died just then to the one shot. We're in the perfect example to highlight it. He'll still die. I'll make sure of that. But that combo there is like an overhead attack. And that hit something that happens when you hit them with the overhead. It's enough time for you to hit the enemy again with a light attack for the certain build. And that creates the one-shot build, the one-shot combo to a certain degree, which makes Leatherface a more dominant character in the game, in my opinion. It becomes much more intense to verse and becomes very fun as well because as a Leatherface player, kill killing a victim in, in a minute or so by using that combo is amazing. So I do enjoy it. I think it's a great mechanic because it creates that uh, fear mechanic towards the victim. So the victims don't feel like they can just do whatever they want in the basement and bully Leatherface, there's still a chance that Leatherface can make a big play happen and kill them instantaneously. As we're going to try and do here, hopefully, against this Julie player. That missed, that missed. I love that missed. Boom. Perfect. Would have been perfect. See over here. Oh, the trap. The trap got them. They're safe in the middle. And I feel like that creates this dilemma that people want to nerf this character or buff it in some way. But I think keeping it this way is maybe the best. Oh, since you just came from car battery the whole time. Unbelievable. So I feel like the one shot mechanic shouldn't change because it's actually a necessity for this character to force victims to play more stealth-like and more safe. And there's perks in the game like no cell which reduce damage completely. One hit, and now followed by the one shot. There you go. That's the one shot combo. That's the combo everyone's talking about that ruins their life. But if that Ligaland right now is running no cell, which has three charges, and every hit instance they take, it's 8% damage reduction up to three charges. So they can take three hits at 8% damage reduction at level three. That perk there counters this perk completely, allowing for the early game of one shotting plays not to exist until mid game. So that's the counter play for that actual build, is using a perk like that, and that perk will become the most used perk on victims, especially victims that aren't playing Anna. Because Anna has a inbuilt ability that has damage reduction. Let me double check the areas here. Fuse box spawned outside? It did, it spawned outside. It's not a bad spawn. Wait, we got pressure valve and fuse box down there. That's amazing. My perk activated for blood as well, which means I do more damage. This is so good. Powder. Nice hit, dead. It's another kill. Love to see it. Love to see it. If you know how to play the character really well, you're pretty much rewarded for the high skill ceiling on Leatherface because he has such a nuanced mechanic with his revving, his understanding of fundamentals. It's pretty much the high skill ceiling character in the game. The highest one in the game, to say the least. No other character in the game has the amount of depth that Leatherface has with his kit, which is really fun to utilize. Especially if you want to play family and main the family, Leatherface is a very good option. So I feel like with the discussion we have right there, there's a counter to the build in some way that it should still exist no matter what. And by creating that new dynamic of power play between victims and Leatherface, the game becomes a lot more fun, a lot more interesting. Because it's truly a high tension game. Life or death scenarios can happen. Anything can go wrong. Car battery, car battery, car battery. Anything can go wrong at any moment. That's what makes it incredibly fun.
I missed you. And then into one shot. No, I raped it too much. I raped it too much. Come back. Come back. Bleed. Bleed. The door's locked. I know where she is. Watch this. She thinks I didn't see her. There we go. Easy kill. 3k. So having all those things together is really fun. And it rewards you for learning their face. So why would I why would I think they need to change it at all? You know? It's a hard mechanic. It gets easy later on once you perf uh, um, perfect it. And then from there, you can have fun with the character. The way victims have fun backstabbing Lurface. It's just the way it is. And that's not an issue. I feel like the game is made like that. The game is pretty balanced in certain aspects. There's some oversights, yes. But this, I don't think, was an oversight. This had to be something they kept in mind. Because it's such an easy mechanic to get to. Once you realize you can just overhead your attack into a cooldown into another hit. And the, the skill tree on the cool ability highlights that too. It's like the cool ability didn't highlight it. It definitely does. My only issue here is maybe the fuse box or back of car battery. They open the door when I'm not there. I can't give Grandpa to blood right now because the blood is important to me. My increased damage output for my one-shot build. Reaching out 20% increased damage. Now that door there could be actually getting open. I do believe that might be the case. I should turn on the car battery. Give me a second to turn on the car battery. At least it gives us some more delay. Turn that on. The last player on the team is a Anna player, so she's going to play more aggressive in some aspect. To what degree, we'll find out. But yeah, I feel like this character is really fun. And changing the one-shot mechanic makes this character lose pretty much a part of his kit. Because without that, it becomes so hard to actually kill players when I can't go into crawl spaces. I can't go into uh, little gaps, whatever it may be. Lurface can't do that because he's such a large character. His goal isn't to do, do so in any capacity. So yeah, don't change this. I think it's necessary. It's necessary even for the game. Because it forces players to play smarter. That's the best part. It forces players to play smarter. And that's the best part about this game. That's why I enjoy playing Takes a Chainsaw Massacre. It rewards you for being a better player, have better understandings, and how to actually use your character and its full performance. You start off casual, you start getting more interested in the character, and then you actually can become a god tier level face, like we have. And I feel like this mechanic shouldn't change. It should stay in the game, no matter what. There's a lot of counters, there's a lot of perks that help out, like what doesn't kill you, heals you back 100% of your HP after one instance. If you do survive from no cell, you will heal up that damage as well. So it doesn't even matter. There's a lot of perks that counter this character to a certain degree. So why take it away from him? So I feel like that is the best showcase of Lurface as we get a 4K as Lurface and show the dominance that I have with this character after 150 hours of playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And those are my opinions about this, that it should stay, shouldn't change. Uh, people that cry about it, keep crying. Others that enjoy it, keep enjoying it because there's always a sense of counterplay when it comes to this. Lurface should be terror. He shouldn't be a person that just walks around. He needs to be full of terror, to pull that terror towards the victims so the victims actually feel scared when playing this game. And that's what makes the game really fun and makes the original IP with the high tension moments that you expect. Feeling like you're part of the movie. That's the best thing. Also, mates, make sure to hit that like button. If you are new, hit the subscribe button. Follow us on Twitch. Join the Discord. Code Lordy at GameStops for 10% off and our merch store, btelmerch.com. Show us what is greatly appreciated.